Workshop Topics. This is part 10, a modified ER40 collet chuck and a top tip. The ER40 and ER32 collet system is pretty good, and this is an ER40 collet chuck with the Morse taper number 3, which fits into the headstock spindle of my Boxford AUD lathe. I find there's a bit of a problem with this chuck. The first one being that down the centre of the Morse taper number 3, there is a threaded hole and the largest piece of bar that I can pass through this chuck is 3 eighths of an inch, which is ok I suppose for machining shafts up to 3 eighths of an inch. I often find that I need to machine shafts accurately above 3 eighths of an inch, and for that I would use a Bernard collet chuck system that I have on my larger lathe, but I haven't ever shown that collet system because most beginners that I can think of would never have one of those in a million years. For a couple of reasons, one being that they are physically quite big and use a cam lock system to attach them to the spindle, and most beginners will not have a lathe of that size. And while I'm on the subject of my larger lathe, it is a Smart and Brown Model 1024. It's big and it's heavy and it works very well. So if anyone wants to buy it, contact me via the website. And before any viewers ask, no, I can't post it. It's very heavy and it's definitely a buyer collect on this one. Or maybe I should say, buyer arranges the transport and the muscle to move it. Time to move back onto the topic. This specially made ER40 collet chuck was sent to me by a viewer, a man called Ron. And I was quite taken aback by the generosity of this viewer. He made this. And looking at the quality of the manufacturer and the accuracy, I have to say that Ron is a proper engineer. He didn't make the securing ring, that's a commercial item. But the main body of the chuck was made by Ron. Every part of this chuck is accurately made and fits together perfectly. Looking at the chuck from the other end, this is the part that fits on the lathe's headstock spindle. I'm really looking forward to fitting this to the Boxford and machining something larger than 3 eighths of an inch. Time to remove my three jaw chuck from the Boxford. I've already slackened it off. I'm not Superman. I couldn't undo it like this without using a bit of leverage. But once the chuck starts to come away, it's fairly easy to remove. It's not very free, it never was, it's a tight fit on this spindle. And the reason for this I think is quite simple. This Boxford AUD lathe is very old, and I bought it from a local engineering company. Although the lathe has had a lot of use, parts of it haven't had much use at all. If you look at the chuck for instance, you can see lots of marks around the chuck from very frequent use of the chuck key. I'll carry on with the story in a moment, but first it's top tip time. Whenever I remove a chuck from the headstock spindle, I always clean the threads. And this is a great thing for cleaning the threads. It's an electric toothbrush of the type that oscillates from side to side. So all I do is run the lathe and then I use the electric toothbrush as shown. And this really does clean up the spindle threads. And you don't even need to use toothpaste. A quick health and safety warning. If you're going to use your toothbrush to do this job, I don't recommend using it to clean your teeth again. If I run the electric toothbrush against the cloth, you'll see just how much dirt and grimes come off the spindle. So I'm quite impressed with this, but I'm going to buy a better one, because this is a cheap one and it uses batteries. I want a rechargeable, all singing and dancing spindle cleaner. After cleaning the threads on the end of the spindle, it's time to fit the chuck. But the chuck is very tight on these threads. I'm just taking a moment to clean the inner threads of the main three-jaw chuck with the toothbrush as well because this is very dirty. The toothbrush does a good job in cleaning up the chuck, but the batteries are starting to run down. Yes, I'm definitely going to buy a proper rechargeable one because I'll go through a lot of batteries doing this. After I cleaned the threaded area of the three jaw chuck, I turned it round and thought it would be a good idea to clean the jaws as well. And as you can see, the toothbrush really removes the dirt. Back to the story. So why doesn't the beautifully made collet chuck screw onto the spindle nose of my lathe? Ron, the man who made the collet chuck, also has a Boxford AUD model, a little bit older than this one, but I wondered if they'd changed the spindle specification. I thought it was unlikely, so I called Ron on the phone and mentioned the problem. And we chatted for a while about various different things. Ron was puzzled about why the chuck didn't fit on my lathe, because there's no specification change, it's the same thread as on his Boxford, but obviously there must be a difference between my lathe and Ron's lathe. Then the penny dropped. My Boxford lathe, although it's old and decrepit, lived in a factory for all of its life, and it only did one job. It was used for deburring pieces of tube, 
so the chuck had never been removed from the spindle, so the spindle is not worn. When I first got this lathe, I had to repair the tailstock, because the locking handle just wouldn't lock, it was worn out. That's because the tailstock had been up and down the bed thousands of times over the years, locked in position just to deburr the tubing in the chuck. That's the problem then, my lathe spindle is like new, Ron made the chuck to fit his lathe spindle which isn't like new, that's why it's tight. And when I think about it, my four jaw chuck is really tight as well. I'm sending the chuck back to Ron because Ron says if I do that, it will relieve the thread so it will fit perfectly, and I look forward to using it. I'd like to thank Ron for his kindness, time and patience. Now a forthcoming project. Recently, I bought a couple of Stuart Models beam engines, which were part of a steam engine collection from a deceased estate. One of the beam engines, not this one may I add, is a factory kit, but some of the parts are missing, because as the owner of the engines got older, he must have got bored and started dismantling them, and some of the parts got lost. And the other factory kit beam engine is for sale on my main steam website. As soon as I get some spare time, I'm going to rebuild this engine that you're looking at on the screen. The top cylinder cover and the drain taps are very different to what's shown on the drawing. It will make an interesting rebuild. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.